Hello, Ducks fans. How are we doing? First of all, I'm so honored, happy, and excited to be here tonight. This night will be very special. My really good friend, like a brother, his number will be up there and join with number eight. And uh, like Henry said last year, that number eight has been a little lonely up there. And it's time to bring another jersey there tonight. And I can't imagine to bring any other number next than number nine, Paul Korea. It's, it's funny that Paul thing is so humble and private person. He almost thinks that he doesn't deserve this honor, but I don't care. We all know he deserves this honor. What he has done... What Paul has done for Ducks organization and all of us and our hockey family in Orange County, it has been so special. I have the honor to introduce, ladies and gentlemen, number nine, Paul Korea. for showing up. <laughs> That's a good start here. And we are not going to roast Paul tonight. We are not talking about his bad driving or anything like that. So tonight we're going to talk about great things about Paul. And I always remember when I saw Paul first time, it was 1993 in Toronto, Hockey uh, NHL Awards. And I got honor for Rookie of the Year. And Paul was there, winner for Howie Baker award for best college player of the year. And I always remember when they called Paul's name and I saw this little boy walk into the stage. <laughs> and I was thinking, wow, this little boy must be very, very special player. <laughs> and I didn't even know that they play hockey in Japan. <laughs> so then my agent told me that actually Paul is from uh, Vancouver. And I said, okay but he still must be a very, very good player. So, a few years after, I found out how good he really was. And who would guess at that time what kind of journey we would have together? The way how Paul played the game, with a lot of respect, a lot of passion, and what he brought for the locker room every day, it was something else. I've never seen anybody who, whose dedication and commitment and everyday discipline for hockey, it was something else that I can only admire. I could not do, and I don't think you guys could do either. But playing with Paul, it was easy. He was so fast, his scoring touch, his skills, the way how he saw his teammates on the ice made him one of the best players ever played at this game. And it has been a huge honor to be able to play with Paul so many years. He made us better players and better persons. And this journey has been unbelievable. And obviously last year, we both got inducted to the Hall of Fame, same time. And I think it was crowned for our careers, and it was so special to get there together. Well, tonight, there's going to be another special thing. Number eight and number nine, 
will be there forever. And Paul. You have been like a brother for me, and I really want to thank you for everything what you have done for hockey, for Ducks organization, your teammates, and for me. I'm so proud of you. Congratulations. Timo, you're short. Thanks, Ryan. I've never, Paul, I've never heard Timo say so many nice things about you. You must have been killing him not to roast you. <laughs> but uh, thank you. Uh, it's an honor and a privilege to be here today to finally witness the raising of Paul Korea's number nine jersey. So again, I, I can't stress enough truly what an honor and a privilege it is for us all to be here. Because if you look up in the rafter, you notice that this type of thing does not happen every day. So Paul and I came to Anaheim at the same time. It was just the second year of the franchise. I was able to witness him as a rookie become a star immediately in the league and witness the unbelievable maturity level that he conducted himself with as well. And back then I was always thinking to myself just how much pressure he must have had on his shoulders every single day. The rest of us could just go out and focus on our own game. But Paul had the burden of being the, the face of the franchise, and he had to perform every night just to give us a chance to win. And he constantly did his best to put his team and his teammates in a position to succeed, making us all of us around him better. And if we didn't win, he would shoulder the burden and feel like he could have done more to help us win. Now these are the qualities of a true leader, and Paul exemplified this to the fullest, from his first game here to his last game here. Then there was the one day when the great Timo Solani came into town. When that happened, I can say I was absolutely for, happy for Paul because I can only imagine the weight that was taken off of his shoulders. He finally had someone to play at his level. One of the best tandems we have ever had the privilege to watch in this building. And I, and I had, as Timo would say, the unbelievable privilege of actually being on the same line with these two guys. And the chemistry between them was instant. Honestly, I just did my best try to keep up and fit in with you guys. But when they are on the ice together, they are so in sync. The chemistry between them was instant, like no one else was even on the ice with them. <laughs> Playing in their own little world. Again, I just tried to fit in. And a friend, a friend actually showed me a picture uh, recently that I think really captures this. So if you guys don't mind putting that picture up for me. Am I the only one or is anyone else see what's wrong with this picture? <laughs> really, Paul Timu. If you guys are still wondering, that's me on the right. That's me. <laughs> and I think I actually scored on that play. <laughs> kind of tough following uh, all these speeches. I thought I might have some original material, but uh, apparently not. I guess that's good, though. It is a true honor to be part of a special day like this for the Ducks organization and for all the great Duck fans as we celebrate a special player in person. Congratulations, Paul and Val, on this recognition. Your number nine is a perfect fit beside your pal Tamo's number eight up there. Paul and I never played together here in Anaheim, but we represented Canada at the under 20 World Championships when we were teenagers, and again at the 2002 Olympics in Salt Lake City. We played against each other as kids growing up in British Columbia. We competed in the NHL during our careers, and unfortunately to remind everybody about the 2003 Stanley Cup Final. We tried to make up for that one. But it has been over the last eight years since we both retired here in Orange County that our friendship has grown. Your enthusiasm and passion for life are contagious, whether out surfing or on the hill snowboarding. No one could possibly be more excited than you are when I catch a two-foot wave. As our friend T-Mac says, NBS. 
Since you were the organization's first ever draft pick, as fans, teammates, and opponents, we have all witnessed your dynamic and creative play on the ice. We have seen your passion and competitive fire on display. We all remember the seemingly nightly highlight reel plays you delivered. As impressive as all of those accomplishments and successes are, I am even more impressed by how you did it. With the class and integrity you displayed along the way, You would be hard-pressed to find a more disciplined, a more committed, and a more focused athlete. Your preparation for games is legend legendary, as, as Steve pointed out. You are always striving to improve, embracing the long hours of hard work. You are never afraid to think outside the box to find new ways to get better. You are truly a wonderful example to all of us in how to achieve our best and how to carry ourselves while doing it. Congratulations, Paul, on this great honor. Back in 1993, I sat in the stands at the Quebec Coliseum, nervously waiting to hear which team would call my name at the NHL entry draft. As I've looked back on my career, there have been many fortuitous things that have happened to me, but being selected by the mighty Ducks of Anaheim was one of the biggest. I was very lucky to start with an organization that gave me the opportunity to have a big role right away and to be asked to be a leader early in my career. I was fortunate to have Jack Ferrer as a GM. Jack always demanded excellence, but he was very patient with me, giving me time to learn, make mistakes, and grow as a player. And I was very lucky to have Ron Wilson as my first head coach. From day one, Ron insisted that I become a more complete hockey player. He asked me to develop my shot and be a scoring threat, but also that I compete equally at both ends of the rink. Obviously, some lessons were learned better than others. <laughs> hockey is undeniably the best sport in the world. As a young player, I fell in love with the speed of the game and the skills and physicality needed to play it. But what I was most attracted to was being a part of a team where everyone contributes towards a common goal. Many times in our game, the offensive players receive an undue amount of recognition for a team's success. But what really wins games are contributions from great goaltenders like Guy Bear and Jay Ashiger. Defensive defensemen like Keith Carney and Dave Carpa. <laughs> Penalty killers like Joe Sacco, Ted Drury, and Rob Niedermeyer. And players that create a safer working environment for all of us, like Stu Grimson and Kenny Baumgartner. Thank you to my teammates for looking after me on and off the ice, for making me a better player, and most importantly, for the bonds and friendships we have that will last a lifetime. I share this honor with all of you tonight. There's a saying in our sport that you can either be a skate guy or a stick guy. But if you're both, you're going to be in for a lot of problems. Well, I was a skate guy and I was a stick guy. I was also a glove guy and a long underwear guy. In short, I was unquestionably the highest maintenance player in NHL history. That is true. 
through. So the biggest thank you of the night goes to all the equipment managers and trainers who had the unfortunate task of working with me. Thank you to Mark O'Neill, John Alloway, Chris Kincaid, Greg Smith, and Chris Phillips for all your hard work and the saint-like patience you showed in dealing with me for nine seasons. Thank you to my family and friends for being there for me throughout my career. Thank you to my brothers and sisters for always keeping me grounded by providing a never-ending competitive environment. Thank you to the love of my life, Valerie, for your unconditional love and friendship. And thank you to my parents, my late father, TK, and my mother, Sharon. Thank you for the countless sacrifices you made in your lives so that I would have every opportunity to succeed in mine. Over the years, many of the games, the wins and losses have faded from my mind. But I can remember like it was yesterday, the ovation I received stepping onto the ice for my first practice here. And the roar of this crowd when we beat the Phoenix Coyotes in seven games to win our first playoff series back in 1997. And in my last home game here, you literally and figuratively picked me up off the ice in game six of the Stanley Cup Finals. Thank you to all the fans for supporting me for nine incredible years. Thank you for supporting the team and the Ducks organization for 25 seasons. And thank you for making tonight the most memorable night of my life. Thank you very much.